I'm excited that people want to know more about uh, Earth Day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think we can, we can start. So hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca, Manager of Business Development at Green Key Global. Um, first, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar session. And um, before I introduce our guests, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Your participation is encouraged throughout the session, of course. At any time during today's webinar, please use the Q&A feature to ask your questions. Please use the thumbs up icon to upvote questions in the queue. This is really going to help us get your question up more quickly. Uh, finally, we'll be recording today's session. Um, it will be available on demand on the, on the Green Key Global website. So on April 22nd, 2022, the world will celebrate the 52nd annual Earth Day. As climate-related changes start to affect the planet, this day has grown in importance and popularity. This session will explore how your hotel can celebrate Earth Day in a way that's meaningful to your team members, your guests, and the wider community. Today's session, how hotels can contribute in the local community on Earth Day, will cover Earth Day history, what it is and who celebrates it, how to celebrate Earth Day at your property, as well as some key messaging. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce, introduce our guest speaker, Natalie Lowe. Natalie, a good friend of mine, is a hospitality industry veteran. Started her event company in Niagara 17 years ago, but I can't believe that. <laughs> An alumni of University of Alberta and Ryerson University, Natalie started her career in hotels both at the property and corporate level before moving into events. She's a certified meeting planner through the Meeting Professionals International and a climate reality leader through the Climate Reality Project. Natalie founded the Sustainable Events Forum in 2018 and hosts Earth Day for event people every April and has been recognized by industry associations and publications in both Canada and the US as an expert on sustainable events. Here she is, the fabulous Natalie, and uh, take it over. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, lovely to be here. And I'm really excited that so many people are keen to start celebrating Earth Day. I'm just going to make a couple of changes over here and see if I can share my screen with the, uh, the, the hope that uh, technology is on my side today. Um, so let me just get this. Going. Um, welcome to everybody. Um, really excited to be here. We're going to talk about some ways that we can celebrate Earth Day, a little bit of background so that you've got some context when you go into planning mode, and um, hopefully um, some ways that uh, we can broaden the celebration of, of Earth Day um, and include more hospitality and hotels in, in that. Um, does everybody see my first slide up? It should say the Sustainable Events Forum, Ways to Celebrate Earth Day. Somebody give me a yes. I'm a little blind on this side. So um, Rebecca, can you see the slide? Oops. We can see it. OK, OK. Um, no problem. I see somebody has their hand up. So Rebecca and Elizabeth, I'll just leave that to you if you need to interrupt me. I'm open to questions as we go along. Absolutely feel free. Um, you're not going to interrupt the flow. We're going to have really more of a discussion. I'd be open to understanding what the obstacles are on your side for celebrating this at your hotels so that we can um, really address any concerns that you have today. So <clears throat> We'll get started. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Sustainable Events Forum, what we are and what we do. And we were really created as a way for us as meeting and event planners to learn about the industry and its approach to sustainability. We couldn't find anyone who could teach us, so we knew that we had to create something that would help us um, teach ourselves. We use four pillars. Um, they're actually a little bit, we keep doing this to ourselves, but we always start with educate, which for some reason is second on this list. But Candice Tulsram, who is my partner, is actually in the chat. She's going to be answering your questions and dropping links for you in the chat box as I go through. But we always start with education because until you really understand the problem, you can't really address it. 
And then once you're educated on the effects of the climate emergency, you usually go into a bit of a deep funk. Um, so we work on inspiring ourselves, and that includes looking at people who have um, had great success and people who have done incredible work. Um, then we really feel that collaboration is needed. So one of us working independently can do a small amount, but working with partners like Green Key Global and the Hotel Association of Canada allows us to really expand our reach. Um, also allows us to learn from each other. Climate science is an emerging science, which means something that I learned last year may now no longer apply and we need to move forward based on new information. And it's always helpful to have a team help you do that. And then the fourth one is really that we have to take action because as we all know, um, you know, a great plan is a great plan, um, but if you don't act on it and execute, um, nothing really happens. Although I am fond of the military saying um, it's something like uh, battle plans never survive first contact with the enemy. So one of the things as planners that we know is that our plans will have to evolve as the situation evolves. And it's something that we're big believers of. Um, just we've seen a lot of changes in the last couple of years with climate science and the attention that people are giving to it. So let's talk about what is Earth Day. And I'm sure we're all aware that Earth Day is the day that we really celebrate everything that is given to us on this planet, the beauty of our settings. Many of you have hotel properties in stunning um, areas of Canada, and it's really our opportunity to be grateful and celebrate everything that we have. But it's also an opportunity to learn better how we can protect it and how we can work with others in our communities to protect that beauty um, and ensure that it's not ravaged by the effects of the climate emergency. So Earth Day was actually created by an American senator in the 1970s. So Rebecca's correct, it's 52 years old. Um, so it, it has been going on for a long time. And traditionally, Earth Day has been something that, you know, really hardcore environmentalists would celebrate. And what we try to do with Earth Day is we try to combine our business with the, the intent of Earth Day, and that is bringing awareness to everything that we can do. So when we look at celebrating Earth Day, we look at two facets, and that is educating ourselves and also doing it within our own communities. It's great to get onto a global call and to be talking about the planet from a broader perspective, but the reality is that or, um, climate action happens within your community, and that's really where you're going to find your go-to people. As a hotel property, when you are celebrating Earth Day, it is going to be more about your community, your local suppliers, and your staff on site, um, and really speaking with them, learning with them. So that's really where we like to put our emphasis is that what can you do locally, not so much globally or on a, on a broader scale? Because I don't think that we have the, um, I don't think that we have the uh, ability to really affect things on a global perspective as much as we can right within, you know, right outside the steps of our own property. So why do we celebrate Earth Day if it's just another day on the calendar? And Really, the reason that we do it in April is because it's really the start of one of the most beautiful seasons, and it's a time when we really can appreciate everything that's going on with the planet. Um, maybe not in the southern hemisphere where they're going into winter, but certainly in our hemisphere um, where we're starting to, you know, really reap the rewards of a, of a beautiful spring. So what we want to talk about today is a little bit about how other people are celebrating Earth Day, what they're doing, and um, how we can capitalize on that. So we've talked a little bit about two main goals, and that is creating education and being involved in the community. So let's talk about what that education means. And I want to be clear that when we do anything regarding education, we look at it as an opportunity to educate ourselves and to bring outside experts in. 
So one of the things that I would encourage you to do within your local area is to find your local environmental club or if you've got sustainability activists in your area that you can bring them in, they can talk to your team. Um, we've even gone so far as to have um, waste management experts come in and talk to teams about how the waste stream is managed, what the local issues are. If you've got hot spots like droughts or you've experienced flooding, your local municipality has some great resources that you can tap into. There's almost always a sustainability person at the municipal level and they tend to not get a lot of phone calls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and not get asked to come out and speak to people a lot, but it would be a great opportunity to have them in-house um, talking to your team about what's going on locally. It is an opportunity to learn from those experts as well. Um, someone that we've talked about recently is Ben Liji. Um, you know, certainly Canadian businesses for sustainability and responsibility are our, our, our buddy Lior Rothschild at uh, CBSR. Um, and some of the people that we draw on are really the, um, the subject matter experts. Um, Lake Ontario Water Keepers is another example because water is such a hot spot for so many of us. So these are the kinds of experts that we tend to draw on and have them teach us. Earthday.org is where this area or this um, celebration sits. And so you can take whatever you're doing with your hotel and you can actually put it onto that website um, and, and get a little bit of um, uh, promotion or, or exposure into that. You can expect for the hotel community, and I'm just being very honest here, is that um, hotels sit in a very difficult spot. It's a high emissions activity to stay in a hotel, but I think we need to stand strong in the idea that everything that we're doing is a step forward. One of the things that we really like to underline is that a person who is already fairly cognizant of emissions and Earth Day activities is not going to make as big an impact as someone who is completely unaware and wants to, to move towards a greener lifestyle or a greener stay at their property. Um, the green team or the development of a green team within your local hotel or in your, your property level is really a good idea to start celebrating and having them engaged on, on that day. So that's certainly something that we would encourage you to do if you don't already have a green team. Some of the issues that we find people stumble upon is that they're scared to celebrate something thinking that they're not the expert. And I think we need to embrace our, our wherever we're at and, and sort of embrace the fact that we don't know, but that we're open to learning. So when I talk about education, it's not so much the property or the hotel educating others as being open to having that education come in. And this, I, I, I struggle with this because most business, business people are not fond of highlighting what they're not good at. Um, but the challenges that we have or the, the bumps that we've experienced, um, it's a good thing to address those because whether we address them openly or not, we are being criticized for them. Um, for example, many of the um, water saving initiatives or, or the you know, housekeeping or the towel initiatives that have happened in the property level, there's some hesitancy from the environmental side to really look at it. And I think what we need to do is be a little bit open about it and be comfortable saying, you know, we've tried this, was it as effective as we wanted? Um, what do you recommend? And, you know, the, um, it's incredible. And we've all done this. When you're dealing with a, a client issue, the best thing to do is to just tell them we, you know, we want to do better. How can we do better? And you take that person and you all know this because it's a, a part of what you do every day. You take that person from being against you to being an ally, helping you work on that problem. And that's really the main thrust that we want to get across with Earth Day is that how do you take people who are perhaps critical of what you're doing and have them help you um, address some of their concerns. So um, I don't think we should be shy about addressing um, 
uh, addressing the um, the issues that we have in the hotel um, on the on the hotel side. So invite an, a local environmental club to address your team. You can have an expert come in to talk about food waste or recycling. Um, you can engage your suppliers and your vendors about, you know, even so far as having them bring in environmentally friendly products that they are showcasing, have them talk to you about the differences. Sometimes you'll find that your vendors actually will get a little bit educated when they're showing you because a lot of salespeople right now aren't clear on sort of broader items. And by that, I mean cleaning products, paper products, look at some of them and investigate them. Um, if you haven't already, it's an opportunity to create that green team. Maybe that's the day when you ask your staff who would like to be on the green team, um, how you can create it, set some goals and priorities for the year. Um, it's also an opportunity to have some fun with your staff and do some in-house challenges, things like wasteless lunches, um, having a draw for the best conservation idea, um, different ways that you can engage your um, guests when they come into your property. So those are some of the ways that we've seen properties that we're working with. And we've found the very best work happens when you actually um, push it as far as you can to the front line. Um, they're really key to, to sort of making your property um, embrace Earth Day. So this year we do have Earth Day on April 22nd. The date fluctuates a little bit by day of week, but it's um, set by earthday.org. So I hope by now that you've set that aside in your calendar. Um, but your local community is probably also already having things done and you can piggyback on their activities rather than creating your own. Um, some of the things that we've certainly seen done and many of you have probably already done already is a river cleanup. One of the things that I will ask you to do is please don't buy new t-shirts for, I know it's great marketing, um, but it's really bad on the environment. Um, every time we buy those new t-shirts, broadcasting what we're doing, um, when you look at materials, um, fabric is one of the harshest materials that that we can purchase so i would just ask um you can do your marketing social media you know the led signs are great just having the staff talk about what they're doing is great um and what we'll what we'll do is ask you if you do a river cleanup or a neighbor neighborhood cleanup to really take it beyond going out picking up the items and disposing of them take a look at what is being dropped in your neighborhood. What kind of waste are you creating? And where does this trash or these recycled items come from? How can you reduce this in future? Um, and how can we make better purchasing decisions so that we're not out there doing a yearly cleanup? Um, so it's really key on Earth Day that we're looking at how we can prevent further damage. Um, there's also an opportunity to create your own projects around the property. So whether it's a garden, um, tree planting is always very popular, except for people who've done tree planting as a um, as an um, profession, it can be pretty hard on, on the body. But simple things like composting, bird sanctuary. I will tell you that bees on roofs are a little bit of, um, they're considered a form of a light form, but still a little bit of a form of um, green watching. So if you do have bees on the roof, it is a good positive step, but make sure that you back it up by finding out if you are also planting the right kind of local flowers and fauna for the, the other bees in the area and what you're doing with those items as you go through. The, and this is just me telling you what I'm hearing from people who are would be our guests coming in, right? We know that 83% of uh, people, according to hotels.com, 83% of your guests are looking for a more sustainable stay. Um, so certainly it's an opportunity on your um, booking engine um, area where you can do your marketing. It's a great area for you to start putting photos of your green team, of your initiatives, of the things that you are doing. Simple things like perhaps you have an earth-friendly um, menu. Um, maybe you've taken some composting initiatives. And that's a great place. Be sure to put it on your social media. Um, 
Candice is going to put some tags into the chat so that you know the tags to use for Earth Day. You can certainly tag us and we will re-amplify. So um, Candice will start dropping those into the, the chat for you guys as we, as we go along. Um, you can partner with a charity. Um, what we would suggest is that you make sure that the charity has a tie to your local community. Um, not a lot of us are near polar bears, although they tug at the heartstrings or seals. Um, but if you're an oceanfront property, yes, it makes sense to do something with whales or ocean wildlife. Um, but if you're a forest or an urban property, those are really not going to resonate as much with your target audience. And although we talk about your target audience being for, for this event is really your team. We recognize the, the guests coming in are your, are your second audience. And some of the things that are resonating with them is um, to use very simple language. So you don't need to talk about greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. You can talk about reducing pollution or less waste. Um, and yes, Candace is putting in here that invest in our planet is the 2022 theme. For TSEF, for our Earth Day, we will be concentrating on two areas, which certainly affect hotels. Primary is um, food waste. Um, and we've talked about that in a whole separate um, uh, webinar, but we'll underscore that because food waste is something that is actionable. It is also the area that has the greatest impact. So if you wanted to do a waste, uh, food waste reduction day for Earth Day, that would be simple enough because what we don't want to do is make grandiose plans or, or put out vague statements. You want to actually have an action item that people can see and touch and be affected by. So you might have something in your lobby that highlights, you know, these are the changes that we've made to our, our menus in order to be more earth friendly. The, um, as we kind of go through, there are a couple of things that I would suggest that we do, and that is that we absolutely um, partner with others that are doing similar celebrations. Um, you're certainly welcome as a, as a low impact way to do this. You can log in. We are celebrating Earth Day on uh, the 22nd from one until three o'clock. I believe it is Candace. And um, the, uh, sorry, Candace is just dropping in here, the World Wildlife Fund. They have um, some great toolkits. They also have a toolkit that is being used for its, its action at work. And you can download that for your green team and have them work through it. So, you know, try to partner with local. Um, we fully agree with, you know, World Wildlife, Sierra um, Club, uh, the David Suzuki Foundation all provide great opportunity, but you'll be a little bit um, overshadowed by them. So you really want to kind of create your own little community of celebration right within your property. So find others that are doing a similar celebration. You can take part, you can work with other hotels in your property or sorry, in your local area um, to concentrate on something and, and to brainstorm ideas. At the end of the day, I know that you're competition, but there's a broader competition. So on this one, hopefully we can have some collaboration. Um, we will be celebrating from an event perspective um, and it is a free online. If you're local to sort of the Mississauga, Toronto area, we will be doing hybrid. So we'll be on site as well. And for that, Everything that I'm asking you to do is exactly what we're doing. We bring in people to talk about different aspects. So we'll have a food waste a specialist. We will also have um, a, a gentleman, Stuart Knight, who talks about the importance of conversations. And that really underlines why we're doing this, is the entire purpose of Earth Day is to have a conversation around our actions, what we're doing well, what we're not doing so well. The reality is that the IPCC has released a number of reports in the last couple of days um, that show that we're really not making the headway. In fact, if anything, we're going backwards. We now are told that we have about three years to make some of the big changes that we need to make to actually affect 
the planet and, and its climate system going forward. So that means that in the next three years, we can expect to see a lot broader um, attention being paid, particularly by regulators and our our guests or that that open audience. Um, if you haven't already, you can see that the federal government has released their climate action plan for 2022. Um, and a lot of it centers around businesses and what we can do as, as a business to affect that marketplace. The other thing that I would suggest is that we always tell people to take a very small step um, and to research it extremely well. So you we're all a little bit afraid because we don't want to be eco-shamed. So we have this Earth Day celebration and somebody comes to your front desk and starts telling you all the things that you're doing wrong. And that's where having your homework done and having your frontline team really understand what you're doing and why helps. So if someone wants to talk to you about a piece of plastic that's in their guest room, that frontline person will have the comfort to explain to them that you've done your research and you've looked at all of the possible things that you can do and that addressing this one action item, let's say, for example, it is food waste, has a greater impact than addressing this plastic piece. But this is what you're doing to address responsibly um, taking care of that plastic piece once it's been used. And that's where we find that it's helpful to have those outside experts come in. They will be far more gentler with you than you, than you think. So... Um, we just find it's easier to, um, to, to take those small steps. Where your green team can really help is if you say, we are taking this step in this quarter, this is what we have planned for the next quarter and the next quarter. And as people come in and they want to ask you about what you're doing, it's always helpful to say, this is what I'm doing right now. It's all that we can do right now. We're just getting back open and, and started and, and embracing um, operating again at full capacity, but we have certain things addressed for the summer. For the fall, we'll be doing this, and in the winter, this will be our, our um, uh, focus and, and your plan. And that was really the business people that we've spoken to who have successfully celebrated Earth Day and embarked on a climate action plan have been able to tell people this is our plan now, and this is what we're doing later. And people will be very open to the concept that you're a business um, and that you have to take things at a, a steady, um, sort of slow and steady as it goes. Um, so the other thing that we wanted to, um, so we will be, I've, I've already talked about Earth Day for event people. Um, love to see, I know Rebecca and Elizabeth are working on uh, your big conference right now, but we'll love to see Earth Day for hotel people. Um, we do lots of events at hotels. So certainly um, we include you in our event people um, concept. But also um, I think it's important that the people who are attending these events see you um, and, and don't be shy about showing up in places like an environmental, you know, if, if David Suzuki Foundation is doing something on that day, which I'm sure they are, don't be shy about, you know, having staff show up and just learn and take information in. Your presence will be noted. Um, and I think that that's really key right now is that we don't want people who are working on this at a property level to, to disappear on Earth Day. We want you to be visible at whatever stage you're in of taking your property to be more environmentally friendly. You have to be seen. And, you know, again, I go back to that. Nobody wants the criticism. I don't think anyone right now is at a place where we're criticizing any step. There's too much that needs to be done. So um, certainly join us on Earth Day. The other thing that we um, do is that this is actually talks about we help event planners make their climate action plan, which they'll be launching on Earth Day. So it's a great day to sort of put out things that you were working on. But if you're looking for some really simple education, um, Candace is going to drop a link for a course that we've created. It's only an hour long. Um, it's very affordable. It's $30 to take the course. You actually get a certificate at the end of it. The purpose behind that course is having 
you or a team member understand the mechanics and, and the context of event, um, sorry, of climate action and sustainable action, of taking the right steps, having those resources, knowing where to go. So that uh, the course link Candace has, has dropped right in there. So I hope somebody has some, it's, it's pretty simple. We just decided one day that we were going to do Earth Day for event people. And we've, um, uh, obviously this is now our fourth year. Um, we found a couple of things help our celebrations and I'll share them with you as best practices. Um, people really seem to either, they either like games or they like competition. I'm not sure which it is, but we usually have some form of gamification um, and people really enjoy that. So we did uh, Climate Jeopardy, which was a Jeopardy game that was um, customized. We have different people do short little video clips. Um, you could have guests at your hotel do a short little video clip using the things in your property that are actually working for the environment. Um, the other thing that we've found really helps is having a wide variety of, of people. So bringing your, everybody from your vendors to maybe a local charity that you work with on a regular basis um, and talking about their impact and creating that community. So when we, when we communicate about whether it be Earth Day or simply your sustainability plan, it's, people are resonating with the idea that it's part of a larger whole. And when you communicate out, the, the figures tell us that 30% of the Canadian public is not interested in climate action, which is great because it means 70% is. 45% of them are what we call the middling middle. So they are people that are concerned about the environment and they're looking for a way to take action. So you really wanna be speaking to that 45% as an opportunity to engage with whatever you're doing at your property for Earth Day and beyond. And the 25%, they're the hard course. They'd be us, um, probably all of us on this, um, on this call. And we're the people that are really pushing for more action and taking those concrete steps. They're people that you would engage as educators and, and really people who would help you take the next step. So that is, I know it seems pretty simple, but honestly it is. I would just encourage you to get your social media um, items lined up um, and, and to celebrate with the rest of us. And we're eager to hear about what you're doing at your property. So please don't be shy. Um, Oh, uh, Norm, I think is in BC. Fortis BC and Fresco is hosting energy savings webinar. Yes, it's um, as we look across the, the, the um, when we're looking at across the country, where the highest emissions are coming from, it's transportation, food and electricity. Um, so electricity savings are certainly something that would be helpful for you from a cost perspective as well. Um, so, um, Rebecca, I think that is just about, I hope it's not too simple. I was trying to keep it very action oriented for some very busy, uh, for some very busy hotel people. No, that's great. Thank you so much, Nestle. Um, I'm guessing, Candice, do we have any questions at all outstanding? No, I don't think so. I think you've answered all of them, Natalie. Well, that was wonderful. That was thought provoking. And as mentioned uh, previously, we are gonna be recording this session and it's available um, at greenpglobal.com at any time on demand. Um, so thank you to Natalie and thank you very much to our guests. I hope that you got as much out of that as I certainly did. That was very interesting. And we look forward to supporting your Earth Day efforts. So um, to everybody, thank you very much for joining us.